Let's talk a little bit about Megalodon. I just barely mentioned this giant prehistoric shark in the first video, since its only appearance amongst those titles was in Shark Hunting the Great White, where the final level of the game does have you hunting a Megatooth Shark, aka the Megalodon. Like all the other sharks in the game, it was very derpy to say the least. And yet, despite how silly it looks, oddly frightening when you find yourself clipping through it all the time. Megalodon has managed to get rather firmly entrenched in a lot of popular culture now. When people started getting used to seeing footage of Great Whites, including people swimming around with them without a cage, you need something to bring that sense of awe and dread back. What better way than a massive shark that was about three times the size? With novels, a few bad B-movies, and the Discovery Channel putting out fake entries, plenty of people have now heard of Megalodon. Games are no different, so here's a little mini-feature, Megalodons in Gaming. Back we go to 1998 and the Ocean Hunter once again. What, you didn't really think I just overlooked this, did you? The great sea monster of the game's second level, the Lunar Sea, is Leviathan. Revealed to be a megalodon responsible for sinking 11 ships with 364 fatalities. This is a big, if somewhat decrepit looking shark. But once that mouth opens, hoo -hoo, that is a lot of teeth and they even reach out towards you. With its entourage of Mago Shark cronies and generally impressive appearance for 1998, it's little wonder that Leviathan would be used for much of the promotional material of the game. Whilst this might not look like too much now, you have to remember that this game appeared in the arcades at the same time as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear Solid, and Half-Life. It was also 60 frames per second, so this was really impressive stuff, far beyond what any hardware in the home could achieve, despite the Model 3 arcade board already being two years old by that point. The Ocean Hunter was released just over a year after Steve Alton's novel, Meg, hit the shelves. The release of this book may well have been what began the thrust of the Megalodon into popular culture. Whilst I can't state this for an absolute fact, it is possible that the Ocean Hunter is the first time a shark specifically identified as Megalodon appeared in a video game. Turn to the realms of Steam Early Access here with Man of War Corsair. The best way I can describe this game would be like Assassin's Creed Black Flag or Rogue, but set in the Warhammer universe. The game version on show here is 0.2, so it's still really early days and very rough around the edges, but there is potential here for a more strategically minded approach to the template that Black Flag had made so streamlined and engaging. Unlike the Assassin's Creed games, you can expect to be attacked by wildlife at sea, and that includes Megalodon. This is a rather conventional take on the shark, which is basically that of a great white that's been considerably scaled up. At a glance, you might think the same about the Megalodon in depth, but they have actually made an entirely new model which has a bulkier body. The teeth and jaws are larger still, giving us a shark that looks like it was completely built around those giant gnashes. This is more in line with most current theories about what Megalodon probably looked like and you can see the differences here as we compare it with the game's great white model. Megalodon was truly a less eloquent design from a completely uncivilized age. In terms of the game itself, these two models are actually being shown to scale, so as we can see, the Megalodon has been scaled down quite a bit. Our little Meg side quest shall end with Ark, Survival Evolved. This is another early access game, though it is also available on Xbox One. 
A year after release, updates still seem to pop up regularly and the users remain happy. As the name rather suggests, Ark is another survival game, but a rather more ambitious one than Stranded Deep with an expansive online multiplayer component. With dinosaurs, which you can tame and ride, there are swarms of megalodons literally infesting the waters offshore. Now it's worth pointing out that the animals in Ark are technically not the animals we know once existed in our world. For example, it's not Tyrannosaurus Rex in Ark, it's Tyrannosaurus Dominum. This is how the game justifies why many species are different and often much larger than they actually were. Megalodon is actually described as Cacaridon Ultramegalodon, but let's not get into the taxonomy debate here. The funny thing is that many people complained that the game's megalodons were far too small. That seems like a bit of a stretch. While it's a bit messy and cobbled together, I made this comparison about a year ago. The purpose was to show that the size isn't really that far off. Some people claim that the humans shrink when they ride the megalodon, but I've also compared the player character to the dorsal fin whilst not riding it, and if the player does shrink, it doesn't seem to be by very much. What is more likely to blame here is things like a very wide field of view setting, which most PC gamers absolutely insist on. One of the side effects tends to be that it makes things look smaller. Oh, yeah, you heard me right, and uh, saw the picture as well I suppose. Yes, in Ark you can actually tame a megalodon, make a harness for it, and then ride it around the oceans as your mighty steed, provided you have a means of keeping yourself warm and, well, oxygenated. I'm outright cheating here by enabling console commands because yay for PC! It makes capturing video much easier. The size issue does persist though, and it's understandable when you think about it. If so many other animals in the game are much bigger than they really were, then why shouldn't the same apply to Ultra Megalodon? Well, this is PC, so naturally, there's a mod for that. Now that is a big shark, and you can still tame it. And you can still ride it. But how can you really top the novelty of riding and controlling a shark that is easily over 100 feet long, a size closer to the initial estimates from the early 1900s? So, is Megalodon still alive in our oceans today? Honestly, almost certainly not, and definitely not in the way that the Discovery Channel was showing a few years ago with its fictional dramas disguised as documentaries. That being that they are freely swimming around our oceans in the epipelagic or mesopelagic zones, and we've just been incredibly unlucky, or perhaps that should be lucky, to have never encountered them. A Lazarus taxon, that being an animal which disappeared from the fossil record for one or two periods only to be rediscovered, is a very real thing. One of the most famous examples being the coelacanth. But there is a huge difference between a deep sea fish eater that grows up to 2 metres and a 16 to 20 metre long super predator that we've somehow never managed to catch in all those fishing nets out there. Keep in mind that the coelacanth was always being caught by those local fishermen in those parts of the world. It was just unknown to modern science that this was happening until 1938. Again, a bit of a difference between a human-sized fish and a predator larger than most whales. Let's think about this for a second. Whilst it's true that when a shark dies, its corpse will tend to just sink and quickly be devoured, that doesn't mean that the remains of sharks don't ever wash up on our beaches. It's not remotely uncommon for just about any species of shark, whale or dolphin to become beached, alive or dead. Whale sharks, basking sharks, great whites, we find their remains washed up quite often. It's just one of those things that happens. Even open ocean species like oceanic white tips and mako sharks, or even deep sea species such as goblin sharks and megamouth sharks will wash up on beaches from time to time. Yet not once has anyone ever discovered a washed up megalodon or something that could be even remotely identified as such. Remember, we are talking about what would easily be the largest fish in the ocean, twice the size of a whale shark. Now, that alone is not entirely conclusive, but there's something else that's never washed up or been seen. 
animals, in particular whales, showing signs of being attacked by such a massive shark. This is one of the biggest problems. It's not just that we don't see Megalodon itself, we also don't see any evidence that it's feeding. Consider this. The 18th century, the height of traditional whaling. It wasn't really possible to haul entire whales out of the water to strip them for blubber. If you've read Moby Dick or done any sort of research in traditional whaling, you might be familiar with the term flensing or cutting in. The dead whale was secured along the side of the ship and sailors would descend on platforms and use flensing knives to cut into the animal. Cuts would be made into the blubber in specific ways before hooks were used to basically peel the blubber away in sheets. This is usually compared to peeling an orange. Basically, the bulk of the animal was processed while it was still in the water, and this process had to be done as quickly as possible because it was an absolute feast for marine predators, especially sharks. It's the ultimate chum and was the ultimate bait for a megalodon. Yet there are no tales of truly monstrous sharks the size of the whales themselves devouring these catches and my goodness, there were a lot of whaling boats and a lot of whales being killed. As for the deepest depths, well, if a megalodon population was to exist down there, then in order to adapt to the different conditions it would surely have changed beyond any recognition and no longer actually be a megalodon. It would have evolved into something else. Whilst it's absolutely true that most of the ocean remains unexplored, and it might seem obvious that a massive super predator could still be out there, there are some pretty big issues and it's these which are what make it extremely unlikely. And we certainly don't need any suggestions of massive international conspiracies between multiple governments and scientific bodies on a scale that would be worthy of the La Le Lu Le Lo. Megalodon was an awesome animal, a true marvel of nature. It's incredibly unlikely that any one event led to its extinction, but rather a combination of multiple factors all coming together against it. In the end, Megalodon may have just simply been too specialised to adapt to a changing world.